Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Friday. We've got our second windy front. We had one yesterday. Now this is the second one. Radar this morning. You can really see it kind of plowing through the Intermountain West right there. Snow up in Montana. A bit passing through Idaho. A little wave right here. And there was a little bit out ahead of it too, kind of running through Salt Lake, although barely any of that was even reaching the ground. But that's going to be the front today that we're tracking. A lot of 40, 50, 60 mile an hour wind gusts over some of the higher peaks. It's a pretty minor front when you look at precipitation. There just isn't a whole lot with it. Um, let's look at the satellite here. So this morning, this is water vapor satellite imagery. And so there's an area of low pressure. You can see the spin. And what it's doing is you've got the front out ahead of it. So that's our windy front. That will be plowing down, continuing through in this direction, through Wyoming. It'll brush northern Utah. It'll brush uh, northern uh, Colorado on its way through. It's a fast mover. Then behind it, this that you see out here in the Pacific, there's a big area of low pressure. That's going to sit and spin. And believe it or not, it's going to sit out there in the Pacific until probably the 13th. So it's going to be there for a while because it's going to, it's basically going to run into a giant area of high pressure that's going to develop across the West between the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And then nothing's going to move. And then beyond that, this storm will likely move into the West. So that's what's on the, uh, the agenda. Let me show you my bullet points. Clear that out. So there's our windy front for today. Then we're into this big area of high pressure and it's going to be sizable with potentially record warmth across a lot of the west. It's going to be rough on some of the ski areas that are open right now. But uh, what that'll do on the other side of it, equal yet opposite reaction will be um, this giant eastern low pressure. I talked about this a couple of days ago. Um, we're going to see record low temperatures, and it is technically an Arctic outbreak for a lot of the Midwest and the uh, the Deep South on the way between Monday and Tuesday of next week. Um, and then, potentially, after the 14th, somewhere right in there, that area of low pressure that will be sitting out over the Pacific, Pacific will be allowed to move in, and then things may turn more active across the West. Here are your best odds of snow. So here's how you read it. So for example, in Utah, little chance of snow today across the Wasatch. Better chances, 11, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And there's a little chance of snow in Colorado today, but again, I emphasize it is a small, small chance. Drilling down on that, just a few locations uh, for specific snow forecasts, less than an inch today across Alta and the Wasatch. An inch on the 14, 15, and then a little bit more right there, 16, 17, and 18. It is going to be a long, dry stretch for Colorado. I mean, you might have a dusting in the central and northern mountains today, maybe an inch, 14, 15, and then two inches, 16, 17, 18. I just don't see a lot right now for Colorado. Um, what else? What else is interesting here? Through central Idaho, less than an inch today about an inch, 14, 15, and then a bigger snow, 16, 17, and also 18. Looking at the forecast radar. So we'll start this up here at lunchtime today. What do we got? There's our windy front. So a little bit of snow there brushing northern Utah. Certainly we're going to see some accumulation up in the Tetons today. You're more in line with what precip there is in this front. You're just in better position. You've got a little bit up there in parts of Montana as well. And again, that's a windy front. Let me move this ahead into the uh, the future here. All right, so there's the dinner hour. And again, just a little bit right there in the central to northern mountains of Colorado. I mean, it's, it's, it's very brief. All right, here we are. This is probably 5 a.m. on Saturday. Um, there's lunch. There's the dinner hour on Saturday. And look what's happening here. This is the early early morning hours of Sunday, November 9th. I mean... Uh, there's just nothing. You've got this big area, ridge of high pressure across the west. All the action is going to be out here into the Midwest, the Deep South, loading up for that big Monday, Tuesday Arctic cold front out there and snow all the way down into parts of Tennessee. Uh, all right, here's uh, there's late, there's early Monday. So that's probably 5 a.m. on Monday, November 10th. All that I see is up here 
in the Pacific Northwest and BC, you're still looking at this big ridge of high pressure across a lot of the West at that point. All right, let's talk about the pressure. Uh, actually, before we do that, let me show you the time height forecast. Now, this is Arapaho Basin ski area. Um, this windy front that's coming through, it's right here. You read this, it's, this is roughly a three day forecast. This is the current time right down here, and then you move in this direction into the future. You're looking at a slice through the vertical atmosphere. Green is going to be moisture, and there it is. There's the windy front. You can see the bump, the pressure ridge right there with all the wind. So that's roughly this afternoon, tonight, into early tomorrow morning when that front will race through um, Arapaho Basin, Loveland, Berthoud Pass, Winter Park, Longs Peak, Rocky Mountain National, Cameron Pass. Those would probably be the areas if, if you see anything, if you see a brief snow shower and a lot of wind, that's the front that's coming through. Now let's look at the pressure. Um, okay, so this is today. You're looking at atmospheric pressure anomalies, so highs or lows. And there's our windy front, little area of low pressure associated with. Look at up here. This is called the polar vortex up here over Hudson Bay. What's going to happen is these two systems are going to merge. This low will rotate down and then into the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic, and it will help to break off a piece of that that, uh, that polar vortex, and that's going to be the setup for Monday, Tuesday of next week. In fact, look at it. This is really impressive, guys. Um, deep area of low pressure, much lower than the 20-year the norm. And this is Monday, 11:10. I mean, again, you're looking at probably minus four standard deviations off the the 20 year norm. And this high pressure ridge out here is no joke either. I mean, you look at this ridge. That's that is significant for this time of the year. Probably looking at some record high temperatures across the West as that plays out. All right, let's look at 1117. So this is after we get through that that massive high. Potentially, we start to develop a more active pattern. Um, pretty large storm system right here off the west coast could be sending waves of energy into the interior Rockies um, after 1114, somewhere right in there. We'll start to get into this pattern. So there is some hope down the road. All right, let's look at, uh, so this is the integrated vapor transport effective for the central California coast. You can see that storm coming around the 13th, 14th, and 15th. That sends in a weak to moderate surge of atmospheric river moisture into the central California coast. That's the storm system, essentially. Here's what the precipitation is going to look like. This is five-day total precip, as if everything fell as rain. And you can see it here. So there's, I mean, there's barely anything for Nevada, Utah, in Colorado, and it's probably totally dry for Arizona and New Mexico. You're just out of the flow. Everything is really up here um, to the north of that axis. And if you look at snow, you can really see it. I mean, essentially, this five-day snow forecast, you know, the major axis, the storm track, is all north of this line. You know, it does hit the Tetons, it hits Idaho, central and northern Idaho, parts of Montana, the Pacific Northwest, and BC. But my goodness, south of that, it is just so dry. Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. Again, that's just the five day. So that takes us out to about the 12th or 13th. What happens beyond that? It does turn more active. Uh, this is the 10 day snow forecast. So notice what happens here. We start to add snow south of that axis in, in California, the High Sierra, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. Now, Compared to yesterday, this is not this is not nearly as much as what we were looking at yesterday. But at least you see the trend. Beyond five days, the storm track appears to shift more to the south and will affect more of California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado. So more of the central Rockies. Zooming in on that into Wyoming, this is probably six to fourteen inches worth of snow up here in the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, Yellowstone, and beyond. And there's snow up there, probably 6 to 12 up here in southwest Montana. Looking at the, the Wasatch, that's probably up to 6, maybe up to 6, 7, or 8 over the high Uintas 
in Colorado, you might, anywhere you see the dark purple or pink, that's over six inches. And so <clears throat> it's at least six inches. And you see a couple pockets like that in Colorado. But Colorado, this is a much thinner snow forecast than what we looked at yesterday. Yesterday was very encouraging. This is not nearly as much. This is a much lower forecast, but at least there are um, some pockets of maybe up to six inches in the mountains of Colorado over the next 10 days. And again, most of that falls after or beyond the five-day forecast, after we get through that area of high pressure. Um, so let me go back to this again. This is your 10-day snow forecast, and again, most of this falls beyond five days. Anywhere you see the purple or pink, that's over six inches. Let's look at some snow plumes. Actually, you know what? Let's look at the east, the northeast, because this is a pretty interesting forecast. Look at that snow right there. See that circulation around um, that area of low pressure Monday, Tuesday with that Arctic outbreak. You've got snow, got lake effect snow coming off Lake Michigan, Lake Erie. You've got just general snow across Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, potentially down into parts of Tennessee. You've also got one, two, three, four waves of snow up there in the northeast at the ski areas. I mean, I've seen some uh, some photos out of Jay Peak. Jay Peak looks pretty darn good right now, and we're going to add to that. Look at that snow up there in New Hampshire, Vermont, upstate New York, and upstate uh, northern Maine. I mean, and again, anywhere in that pink purple is over six inches. Um, I mean, if I'm looking at this, I mean, we're well over six inches in some of the ski areas. In fact, let's let's investigate that. So Mount Washington, here's your snow plume. This is a, like a 15-day snow forecast. The ensemble mean cranks out over a foot by November 22nd on top of Mount Washington. So we're looking really good uh, up there. Um, let's go to J Peak, Vermont. Even better on J Peak. I mean, things are pretty good now. They only get better. Look at this, 15 inches on the mean by November 22nd. It's a very consistent upglide accumulation of snow here. Um, some of these error bars are over 20 inches. Let's go to Jackson. So this is Jackson, generates 13 inches by November 22nd. But I'll tell you, this is a pretty sad period right here through about the 13th with that high pressure, there's not a lot happening. We finally get into more active period after 13, 14. Final stop is gonna be Berthoud Pass. Uh, rough period right here through the 13th and the 14th. That massive high pressure just has a, a negative effect uh, on the ski areas, uh, on the snowpack. Uh, it's just gonna be incredibly warm. Then we finally get into, we flip the pattern here and we could, we could certainly see a little more of an active pattern, although this really doesn't generate that much snow. Five and a half inches by November 22nd, that's an ensemble mean. Um, some of the air bars are up a little higher, obviously, eight, nine, ten inches. But um, that's the pattern, guys. That's what I'm seeing right now. Um, so hang in there. Appreciate you guys tuning in here. Always take care and have a great day.